I was talking to briefly to Brother Brian. I made the fatal mistake of watching Texas play yesterday while trying to prepare or finish the notes. That Brother Brian, that doesn't work very well. No. In fact, we're going to review the Texas game this morning. So those of you that aren't into sports, just bear with. I have a bone to pick with the secondary. Uh, no, I'll say this. It teaches me a lesson sometimes, a few lessons, in that I'm glad my salvation is not built on Texas Longhorn football. Amen. Um, or sports in general. I'm glad to be here this morning. There's, there's several, <clears throat> there's several uh, areas we're going to look at in chapter 3 of Philippians, if you find your place there. Uh, great chapter. Um, I think of the goal line that each of us, if you're saved this morning, we're in a race. We won't get quite to the race part of it this morning, but if you're saved, you're in a race, um, whether you like it or not. And I think the goal ultimately is to finish that race by the grace of God. I'm glad it's not dependent on me. But Paul was pressing toward Mark in chapter 3. I hope each of you are this morning. Philippians chapter 3, if you find your place there, there's a warning given in the first couple of verses again. You may recall, I won't belabor the point from the other lessons, but there was a warning given about the Judaizers that were coming down and creating problems regarding circumcision and, and the law and grace. Paul kind of warns them in chapter 3 again, beware, pay attention, avoid it. So Philippians chapter 3, if you find your place with me this morning, We'll get started. It says in verse 1, Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you, to me indeed, is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concision. Beware of those that are stirring problems up regarding circumcision. Beware. Take note. Take heed. Verse 3, For we are the circumcision, which worship God in the Spirit, and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Father, thank you for the privilege of being here this morning. Thank you for being so very uh, good to us. Thank you for your son. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the privilege of worshiping you this morning. I know we'll be looking at that, Lord, in the notes here in a little bit. Uh, God, help us to remember who we serve and why we serve and, and who we serve. Help us to redeem the time. This class, the others may, uh, Lord, you have your will in a way. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, verse 3 we're going to focus on this morning. Just a couple of points out of verse 3. I'd ask you to pay attention. If you don't have notes, raise your hand. The ushers can get you some. If you'd rather take your own notes, we still have a book up here. If you'd rather just be a good listener, I'm all for all those. So whatever works best for you. Uh, the circumcision Paul's speaking about here, I want you to look with me in Romans chapter 2, and this is a little bit of a review. Which is this? Is this ritual or spiritual circumcision Paul's speaking about? For we are the circumcision. Anybody? It's on your notes. Can't miss it this morning. Amen. It's Paul speaking about spiritual circumcision, not the ritual. Look with me in Romans chapter. Let's clarify, well, what, what is that specifically? Well, it's regarding that of the heart. Romans chapter 2 will not read all these verses, but look at the last couple, three of these, last couple of verses in Romans 2, just to clarify for you again, circumcision. And what is spiritual circumcision? It's that of the heart. Romans 2.28 says, For he is not a Jew which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh, but he is a Jew which is one inwardly. And circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. The circumcision Paul is speaking about here in verse number three is that of the heart. Now you could look at when you have time later on, look at what, you could look in Colossians and follow up with, again, another great portion of scripture regarding spiritual circumcision. It goes on to, goes on to say here, for we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit. Our worship is, is supposed to be inward and spiritual, that of the heart. Look with me in John chapter 4. I want you to think with me this morning as we look at this matter of our worship. And I have to admit, um, God kind of took me to the woodshed on this particular part of, of the scripture. Uh, I've, and, and I'll explain a little bit more here, but our worship is supposed to be inward, spiritual, from the heart, that of the heart, and look at me in John chapter 4, just to clarify that a little bit. John chapter 4, if you would please, reading in verse 19 and following. The woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a 
prophet, our fathers worshiped in this mountain. And you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus saith unto her, woman, believe me, the hour cometh when he shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship ye know not what, for we know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. This matter of worship is, should be inward, that from the heart, in spirit and in truth. And it should, be, it should be manifest or made known outwardly. We're singing praises to God this morning. Now, whether your heart was with that or not, God would have our heart to be with it. So even before the teaching or the preaching starts today, there's music being played and songs being sung. Now, in, in what is it for? To be seen of man? No, it's to prepare the heart of God's people for the word of God that's going to be brought. This matter of worship, folks, uh, look with me here, if you would, please, in Psalm chapter 29. There ought to be a sense and a, a spirit of reverence, a spirit of awe, a spirit of of, of humility and the spirit of praise that ought to come from the heart and be manifest outwardly in that way. But look with me in Psalm chapter 29. Very quickly, Psalm chapter 29. Chapter 29 of the book of Psalm, look, look at me here in verses 1. It says, Give unto the Lord, O ye mighty, give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Speaking about our worship, Matthew, if you would please, chapter 15, and hold your spot on Matthew 15, if you would please. Is it possible, and I ask you this question, and you can answer if you'd like, is it possible to go through a church service and not worship God at all? Well, how come? I've been to many church services since I've been saved. But you know, as you think about it, and think with me back, if you're updating Facebook during the church service, oh, Brother Doug, you're meddling now. Now follow me here. Just listen. Who, who do we serve? A holy God. We serve a God who wants and desires our worship. Amen? And, and he alone is worthy of our worship. So I can look back and I can reflect over the years, and this is a sad commentary, of how many services that I, I haven't worshiped God at all. I went through the motions. Well, everybody saw me in church this morning, so he must be spiritual. Well, the pastor saw me. I shook his hand for sure to make, make sure you greet the pastor and his wife, okay? All right, that's always extra points. But listen, it's God in heaven who we worship, and he alone is worthy of our worship. So if you get nothing else out of the lesson this morning, I challenge you, adult Sunday school class, our worship is important. Who we worship is important. So don't, don't take the Sunday school hour or the, or the preaching time today as, oh, well, I was just there and I put up with it. Wait a minute. God tolerates a lot of my bad manners. Does that make sense? He puts up with a lot of things with me. But this matter of worship, look at me in Matthew chapter 15, if you would, please. Matthew 15, verse number 7. It says, ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying... Look here, this people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Do you realize that if I'm not here to worship God this morning and I leave this morning, oh, I was in the house of God and I didn't worship and I was just giving God lip service, okay, that my worship was in vain? The total sum of my worship this morning will be zero. Now, I can get used to that after a while. Amen? I, in fact, I can get comfortable with that if I'm not careful. Why? Because God has instruct me. Amen? Again, let me, let, me, let me challenge you. God puts up with my bad manners sometimes. More than I'm, 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 I deserve. But if I spend the worship hour, amen, daydreaming, piddling around, checking on the horns update on what they're going to do next week, whatever, amen, what they need to do. Listen, God wants my attention. God wants my worship. I need to be careful, personally speaking this morning, to tread lightly in this area of worship. God does keep note of things and keep track of things. So I challenge you, again, look what it says here. 
This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips. I can sing the songs of Zion this morning and my mind could be on work from Friday or work coming up Monday and not think one thing about the Lord. Does that make sense? Listen, I challenge you. I challenge you carefully and with charity. God took me to the woodshed over this. And you know what? You've wasted a lot of services over the years. You've given zero worship. None. Amen. In fact, your heart was somewhere else most of the time, even though you were singing my praises. Does that make sense? So think about this with me here. Again, it says here, this people draweth nigh to me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. It's somewhere else. Now, look with me in the book of Leviticus. I'm glad I'm, I'm, glad I'm under grace. Amen? You think there's a lot of strange fire being offered in churches in America today? Maybe, possibly. Amen? Look with me in Leviticus. Just think about that. Is God concerned about our worship? Absolutely. Leviticus chapter 10. You see the first two names here in the first verse? Nadab and Abihu? Who were they? Anybody? That's right there. Sons of Aaron. Who's Aaron? High priest. Amen. Do you think these kiddos should have known better? Anybody? I think so. There's a whole message in this one verse here. I mean, several messages. Amen. You can get familiar with the ministry. You can get familiar with the things of God to where you don't respect the things of God. You can get so familiar with the worship service here at Trinity Baptist Church, it becomes just another. Does that make sense? See, let's read this here just quickly. And Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, the high priest, took either of them his censer and put fire there and put incense thereon and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. And there went out fire from the Lord and devoured them and they died before the Lord. And Moses said unto Aaron, this is it that the Lord spake, saying, I will be sanctified in them that come nigh me. And before all the people, I will be glorified. This is interesting. And Aaron held his peace. Aaron knew. Now, lesson one is God's going to be sanctified and get the glory, okay? Not man. Lesson number two is you can get familiar with the things of God at a point where it becomes, oh well. It becomes, well, you almost snuff at it. It's like, eh, we've done this before. But lesson number three here is just because the kiddos grow up in church doesn't mean they're going to get it. Oh, now you're meddling again, brother. Just because the kiddos grow up in church doesn't mean they're going to get it. Dads, moms, amen? Yeah. Of anybody that should have known better, these two should have. Nadab and Abihu, sons of the high priest, amen? Somewhere the ball got dropped. Somewhere, somewhere something got missed. So I challenge you parents, don't just assume because you bring the kiddos to church, they're going to get it, amen? That, that can be a challenge. I'll leave it at that, okay? But there's a couple, couple, a couple of kiddos died as a result of this. Is our worship important to God and how we worship? Absolutely. Yep. Do you think there's, now, having read these verses, do you think there's some strange fire being offered in churches in America today? I do. I think there's things being done in churches in America today that God's not pleased with. But listen, God has put us here. God has given us the privilege of being here this morning. Amen. And God is challenging, I hope, your heart my heart in this area of worship. God alone is worthy of our worship. Now, these first couple sections that we've looked at, our circumcision, our worship, it's regarding the heart. In this matter of worship, it is a matter of the heart. Look with me in Proverbs chapter four. I have found, and again, think with me here. I made a decision yesterday or last night. I don't know, you can relate to this. I like sports, okay? I probably have company here, amen? And I like following Texas a little bit, okay? Usually when they're winning, I'm a big Texas fan. <laughs> when I'm not, I've never heard of them, right? But I made a decision last night to watch Texas play LSU. Good or bad, it was a decision I made. And I'll tell you why I made that decision, because I've taught Sunday school for years, God will bless in spite of me, I've got it figured out, amen? It's pretty well roughed out. Things will go just fine. 
And I, I, God will take you to task over that. Because here's what you do, and this is a habit of mine. Don't laugh, brother. I'll have the Bible in front of me while I'm watching the game. Now, you think the flesh doesn't have problems? And how much I'm getting out of the study at that time. Preparing to teach to be in a worship service the next morning. How do you think that went? You know, you ever feel a weight on your head? Right? And it isn't that we were losing. That was part of it. But, but it's like God's saying, look, there's a worship service several to be part of tomorrow. Where's your heart? Is it with the Texas Longhorns? Or is it with me? Or are you just going to get it all right tonight afterwards? No, it takes a long time to get over that kind of thing when you become part of it. Amen? You get angry, you get upset, this, that, whatever. So think with me here for just a minute. If you're in Proverbs chapter 4, Proverbs chapter 4, look with me in verse 23. You there? Proverbs 4, 23. It says, keep thy heart with all diligence. Why? For out of it are the issues of life. Now, I'll say this. God's not going to help me keep my heart when it's split. Amen? He's going to convict your heart about it. But if you're trying to get prepared for a worship service the next morning, follow me here just for a minute. And you want to get something out of the service and be part of being used of God to be a blessing to others. I will challenge you. Keep thy heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. Put some time into it the night before, the week before, however God lays on your heart in preparation for the worship service. There's, there's, there's a couple things. Um, one, God will bless you for the effort. God will bless the effort. Two, you're going to get more out of it as a result of proper preparation. I don't like necessarily, and this is the old nature, to spend my Saturday night when all this sports is going on, preparing for teaching and worship of the Lord the next day. Pray for me, brothers and sisters. It is a challenge, is it not? And among other, everything else going on, to have the heart properly prepared to receive what God would have for me this morning and to be part of what God would have me to be part of with my heart in it. Does that make sense? Because I can leave this morning from the services. In vain do they worship me. I don't want that on my record book every Sunday. Do you? The sum total of worship for Brother Doug this morning was zero. Amen? Zero. Now you might say, well, God doesn't, re God cares. He thinks upon each of us. He wants what's best for us. And sometimes we frustrate the grace of God if we're not careful. Psalm chapter 119. Well, Brother Doug, could you give me just a little more help there? Well, look with me in Psalm chapter 119. Psalm 119, verse 11, and we'll read a couple of these verses in Psalm 119. We'll start in verse 9. It says, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? Well, by taking heed thereto according to thy word. With my whole heart have I sought thee. Well, let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. As much as the old nature, and we're going to talk a little bit about it here in closing it today, the old nature despises being in the word. That's the wrestling match last night. It's, a, it's like this spiritual warfare going on. God's saying, get in it and stay in it. Turn that thing off. And the nature, gold nature says, don't worry about it. You got time later. What happens later? Right? So there's a warfare going on there. Keep thy heart with all diligence. How? Get into the word of God. Hide the word of God in your heart. Fight it by the grace of God. The old nature is saying, don't worry about it. Look at it tomorrow. Take time tomorrow and get into it. Take time Saturday. I challenge you as a class. You'll get more out of the lesson. You'll get more out of the Bible preaching to follow. And God will be able to use you more thoroughly and completely in the ministry in some capacity. It'll be a blessing to you. It'll change your life in this area of worship. Psalm 19, if you back up to Psalm 19, look, look with me in Psalm 19. Honestly, I was... Uh, you say, ah, oh, Brother Doug, you're just speaking, ministerially speaking. This matter of worship, and let me just say one more word on this, it scared the fire out of me. It did. It's like God reaches down and says, 
And how long has this been going on? Amen? Now that's me, folks. That's me. I, don't, I, I pray for each of you. It's like God will reach down and say, look, uh, you know, let's get this straightened out. Let's not waste the time I've blessed you with. Psalm 19, in verse 7, Find your place there with me quickly here regarding the heart. Psalm 19, verse 7 says, The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. That covers me. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey in the honeycomb. Moreover, folks, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth... And the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, thy, my strength and my redeemer. You want the words of your mouth to be acceptable in his sight? It's going to be key to the meditation of your heart. You want to get things out of the worship service today? It's going to be key to the, your heart, the meditation of your heart. This matter of worship is inward, it's spiritual, it's that of the heart. It's manifested outwardly by reverence, humility, and singing our praises to God. So, small lesson on worship. We could teach on worship a very long time. But we are the circumcision, which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus. We rejoice, our rejoicing is in the Lord. You'll see the note here, and what we've, not what we've done, but what Christ has done for us. We recognize that what we have in Christ and praise his name. Folks, just think with me for a minute here. My rejoicing is in the Lord and not in myself. My rejoicing is in God's grace, not the law. My rejoicing is that God sees fit to even use me today to bring a Bible lesson. My rejoicing is in the privilege of being here today. I think back this past week, how was it? God take care of things for you that you weren't even expecting him to? Often God takes care of things we don't even think about and God steps in and takes care of it. Our rejoicing is in Christ. Look with me in Psalm chapter 100, if you would, please. You have the privilege of singing today. Ah, oh, folks, it ought to be a chance to raise the roof for the Lord. God thinketh upon each of us. And what a privilege it is to sing praises to his name. Brother Doug, we do it every Sunday. Well, praise God for that privilege. Amen. You know, if you can't get excited about anything else, thank God you're even here this morning. Psalm 100, look what, look what it says in Psalm 100. It says, make a joyful noise. Now that cuts out the complaining. <laughs> that cuts out the, well, that cuts out the murmuring, does it not? And the grumbling. Unto the Lord, all ye lands, serve the Lord with gladness. It's a privilege to be part of the ministry. It's a privilege to worship. It's a privilege to be here. It's a privilege to be with each of you this morning. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Why? For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. Folks, if you have nothing else to thank God for, what about your salvation? Amen. Ah, oh, brother, it's been a long week. I'm tired. Listen, at least by the grace of God, have enough in you to give God thanks for, for your, your salvation. Give God thanks for his son. Give God thanks for his word. Give God thanks for another day to breathe air and be part of the work of God. Amen. Help me to redeem him time, Lord. Help me to be a blessing to somebody today. Help me not to think of myself for change, but to put you first. It's a matter of the heart. Our rejoicing is in Christ. Look with me in Psalm 103. One other here, Psalm 103. This is a great, great psalm. They're all good, but look, look with me here in Psalm 103. It says, bless the Lord in verse 1, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, 
How do you improve upon that, folks? How do you improve upon that? And for God help me not to forget all your benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger. Oh, praise God, underline that, amen. Slow to anger and plenteous of mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. Verse 10, you might highlight, and circle that and underline it twice. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to, his, to our iniquities. Whew, boy. I was thinking of Nadab and Abihu in Leviticus 10, amen. Aren't you glad we're under grace? Folks, aren't you glad you come stomping in here? I'm sorry, walking in here in a bad mood on a Sunday morning, it happens. I've got the corner on that, amen. And I'm thankful God just doesn't, amen. He, in a way, he tolerates. I think of the goodness of God, kind of nudges us, come on now, let's take care of things. Let's get, the, let's get our heart back, amen. Let's get right here. It says, for the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Like as the Father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame, and he remembereth that we are dust. As for man, his days are as grass. As a flower of the field, so he flourisheth. For the wind passeth over it, and it is gone. The place thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him and his righteousness unto children's children, to such as keep his covenant, and to those that remember his commandments to do them. Yep, our rejoicing ought to be in the Lord this morning. Thank God for his goodness. Thank God for his mercy. I'm glad he has not dealt with me after my sins like, that I, like I deserve, folks. Our boasting ought to be in the Lord. Now, we're just about out of time here, but it says, I want to read this verse three again in Philippians. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit, rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. Well, why not? <laughs> oh, that's a whole nother month of lessons. The flesh is going to let you down here. But look with me, if you would, please. We're to make no, pro just let me read through these. It's up on the screen. We're to make no provision for it. We're to mortify or put to death the works of the body. We're to walk in the spirit so we don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. I think there's an amazing connection between the word of God, walking in the spirit, and the fruit of the spirit. You say, what about this flesh, the old nature? It's not going to completely go away. Amen. One or the other is going to have preeminence each day in your life. This battle's never ending. But I'll say this, and we can look at a couple of scriptures here and maybe help us out here. Look with me in the book of John, chapter 6. You want help with his old nature? I think we all know this. I think we know where to go for help. I do. It's not going to be the first or last time you're going to be challenged with this. But the old nature this morning doesn't want to be here. And in case you're, you're, you're unsure what I'm getting at, the old nature doesn't want to be here. The old nature doesn't really like singing. The old nature doesn't want to be in the Word. In fact, the old nature would just as soon be home sleeping this morning. And when the alarm clock went off this morning, it crossed my mind, okay? The old nature does not necessarily like anything to do with God. It wants to have its own way. Well, there's, good, there's a solution to this, and you'll find the first part of this in John chapter 6, 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. If there's going to be a change in my heart this morning, let's take this matter of worship, is going to have to come from God. Amen. I can stir up a little bit of interest. I can stir up a little bit of a, a little minor excitement. Okay. A little bit of a kind of go get them for a bit, but it's not going to last. It's going to have to come from the Lord. 
You'll find here in verse 60, 63 again, it says, The flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Follow that up with Hebrews chapter 4. If you're challenged with this, I am. I probably have company. The old nature seems to have its way more often than it should. But Hebrews chapter 4, look with me in verse 12. It says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing asunder of soul and spirit of the joints and marrow, and a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. If you want change in your heart and life, it's going to have to come from God. It's going to have to come from getting in the Word of God. I can struggle with this. I can blame people. I can just quit. But at some point, I have to come to the realization, and by the grace of God, remember that it's God who has started and God who will finish this work in me. Does that make sense? It's God who's going to help me in this area of dealing with the old nature and ultimately through the Word of God and His Holy Spirit. Look with me, if you would, please, in 1 Peter chapter 2. Familiar scripture, 1 Peter chapter 2, and we're just about done here. 1 Peter 2. 1 Peter 2, 1, look at the connection here with the word of God and putting aside things. It says, wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings. God wants us to set these things aside. God doesn't say to become comfortable with them. He wants us to deal with them with his help. It goes on to say in verse 2, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word. Why? That you may grow thereby, if so be you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. And I know this, and I know each of, each of you here know this too. Indeed, the Lord is gracious. Have you been in the Word at all? You know the Lord's gracious. But you want to put off things. You want to put off the weariness. You want to put off the boredom. You want to put off the, well, it's just ask God for help and get into His Word. And here's the scary part about it. He'll help you with it. He'll make the things of God real. He'll make it exciting. He'll make it applicable. He'll open your eyes to what He's doing around you and would like to do in your life. But this matter of, of the old nature, it's going to fight every time. It's going to fight to come back to services today. Look, professional sports have started. Oh, you had to mention that. And I understand Green Bay's even got a team this year, John, right? Well, the Vikings don't like Green Bay, John, okay? Well, we're not going to get into a fleshy discussion on, on sports, are we, John? Amen? But listen, the old nature's, the old nature's going, to, going to fight this. Okay, it's going to fight. It's not going to want to. It's not going to want to be in church when the doors are open. It's not going to want to be in the Word of God when you should be. It's not going to want to do any of this stuff. But it's going to be glad. It's going to be really glad to to turn on this to watch that and skip this. It's just the way it is. You're going to fight it, or you're just going to give in to it. Well, fight it with the grace of God and His help. It's a challenge. I'm telling you, it's a challenge in America today. We are bored people by nature. Are we not? And I think it's gotten into Christianity just a little bit. It's gotten into my life a little bit. Amen? If the scenery's not changing, I get bored. But get into the Word of God. Again, it says, Newborn men desire the sincere, sincere milk of the Word. Why? That she may grow thereby. Spiritual growth dependent on the Word of God. None of us has arrived yet, but let me say this in closing. Um, you can be in the Bible. You can be in church, you can be in prayer time with God, but at some point you're going to have to learn to yield and submit to what God is asking you to do. I can read about the old nature, I can read about the spiritual warfare, I can read about the Word of God as quick and powerful, but you know what the problem is with me, probably of anything else? It's a matter of yielding and submitting to what God is telling me in His Word. The Holy Spirit can speak to the heart. And I can simply say no to what God is asking me to do. Look at me in Romans in closing chapter number uh, 11, oh, gee, 11, chapter 6, Romans 6 in closing. I don't think we're lacking for Bible teaching or preaching at Trinity. No, no, no flowers here looking for Bible saying. I don't think Trinity's hurting for Bible preaching. Okay? Folks, if you've been here for any amount of time at all, for any years at all, Trinity's a Bible church. You're challenged to read through the Bible. You're challenged to be in the Bible. You're challenged by Bible preaching and Bible teaching. I don't think that's the problem. Look with me in Romans chapter 6, verse 11. It says, Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the lust thereof. 
Neither yield ye your members of instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members of instruments of righteousness unto God. I'll say this. I think the problem, and I have this myself, is simply a matter of yielding. The word of God's gone out this morning. It's going to go out again at the 11 o'clock hour. And the old, the old nature is going to say, ah, you've heard that before. Don't worry about it. He'll get over it. He'll bring something else next time. Amen. Listen, God's got something for each of us this morning. Did we get something that God has for us? And now what are we going to do with it? It comes down to yielding and submitting to God's will for our lives. God wants us to put off some things and put on some things. God has a special message just for you from his word this morning. I like to think part of this is a matter of worship. May you think about this and be challenged with it during the next hour and think, well, what is my, what is my attitude concerning the worship of God? How do, where is my mind most of the time? Where is my heart at? Folks, we're out of time. Let's stand.